Well, hi there, everyone. Thanks for joining us for the Crim 2 News at Noon. I'm Channing Curtis in for Laura Papetti. Well, today, the Washington Department of Health and Spokane Regional Health Districts are both holding press conferences. Now, the meetings give an update on COVID-19 within the state. That DOH meeting started at 10 a.m. The SRHD meeting started at 1030 and is still going on. Now, of course, we'll continue to keep you updated as far as what health officials here have to say, both on the Crim 2 News at Noon and on our website, crim.com. Now, starting today, no visitors will be allowed at Sacred Heart and Holy Family Hospitals. There will, however, be exceptions for maternity, children, and end-of-life situations. Providence will also not be offering public COVID-19 testing because there are just simply not enough supplies or staff. Ten members of the Washington National Guard will be arriving at Sacred Heart on Friday. The Guard is there to assist the staff in non-clinical roles, and they will be there for 30 days. Now, state prisons are also seeing an uptick in COVID-19 cases amongst their staff. Since the pandemic began, there have been more than 3,000 cases among staff, and four of them have died. Three of those people were workers at Stafford Creek Correction Center in Grays Harbor County. One was a worker at the Monroe Correctional Complex. Now we'll get back to more of our COVID coverage here in just a bit, but in the meantime, let's take a live look outside and look at these weather conditions. This is a live look at downtown Spokane right now and a lot more clear at this noon hour than it was earlier this morning as we saw a lot of fog during our morning commute hours. Meteorologist Jeremy Legoo is in the Outdoor Weather Center at this noon time. And so, Jeremy, what can we expect next in the forecast? Any return of snow happening? Oh, I think so. But you remember, you got to call me a snow optimist, so I'm going to look for any chance I can to forecast it. So keep in mind as we head through the day, temperatures in the mid 30s kind of set the stage for what we're going to see tonight. Right now, it's some thick cloud cover overhead. And I told you this morning that it was just going to kind of feel like we're stuck in this gloom today. And with this dense fog and low hanging cloud cover, that is exactly what it feels like. The good news is starting to see improvements in visibility across the region, and we've expired many of those dense fog advisories and freezing fog advisories. Now we're just looking at those temperatures slowly climbing as we get into the afternoon. The big change here, though, is that despite losing the clouds, what we are going to get is a little bit of moisture moving in overnight. Now, some forecast models calling this a bit of rain, some calling it snow. Me personally, I think what we wind up seeing is a little bit of rain transitioning into snow as we pull down some of the cold from overhead. And then as that works its way in, we will see there's the rain and then snow starts taking over. And by the time the sun comes up tomorrow, it is rain across much of the region falling on top of that snow. And for us here in Spokane, I don't think we even get to call it accumulating snow. Over in North Idaho, Coeur d'Alene, maybe a little bit, but it's all rain and it all melts by the afternoon. I'll walk you through just why coming up in just a bit. All right. Well, thank you, Jeremy. In the meantime, our Crim 2, Nicole Hernandez, is telling us more about some of the parks and how they plan on being updated here in the Spokane area. Nicole? And take a look here. So this is an outline of the process that we have to go through in order for the Parks Department to come up with their full 10 year master plan. So we've already gone through phase one and phase two. Now we're moving into phase three. Phase three is just taking all of the community input that they've already gotten and working on what that 10 year plan is going to look like. By February, they're planning on showing the draft plan off to the community, then getting even more input. Then the final phase is to adopt a final plan. That should happen by March 2022. This master plan is going to break down what Spokane Parks is going to work on for the next 10 years. Last time we had a master plan go out to the community was before the Riverfront Park renovations. Now that huge project is done, Parks Director Garrett Jones says the city wants to work on projects the community cares about. And that's the reason that the Parks Department set out that community survey. They're planning on taking all of that information to make sure what they're doing in the next 10 years lines up with what the city wants. In Spokane, and Nicole Hernandez, Crum 2 News. While well, Idaho's COVID positivity rate stood at 25% last week, that's the highest percentage they've seen during this entire pandemic. The state's Department of Health and Welfare director said to keep in mind that there is still a backlog of cases. And as those cases continue to increase, so do the number of healthcare workers who are out because they've contracted COVID or been exposed to it. He also says getting vaccinated is still the best protection from Omicron. And if you do get the virus, the vaccine will help you keep from getting a severe case and avoid going to the hospital. The health and welfare director did add that he understands the public's exhaustion as we approach the second year mark of the pandemic. I think we're all tired of this. I think all of us, including myself, wish that we weren't 
uh, having to deal with the pandemic. There have been points during the pandemic uh, where I personally have been really exhausted, and I know that's the same for many, many of the staff that work here and across the public health districts and certainly in the healthcare uh, settings. The director also added every day brings new challenges and that they're focused on doing the best they can for the community with the information they have. Now, in the meantime, the Biden administration is taking new steps to help Americans battle rising COVID cases and hospitalizations from the Omicron variant. Elise Preston has the latest from New York. The Biden administration is making plans to ship 400 million N95 masks to pharmacies and community health centers. They're coming out of the strategic national stockpile and expected to be available next month. Health experts say the better quality masks are needed to protect from the Omicron variant. The reason I like those is they seal better up here at the nose, and when I'm working with the glasses, it's a lot easier to see. <laughs> so if it offers better protection, okay, great. I'm willing to wear it. COVID home tests are also becoming more accessible. Americans can order four free tests per residential address at covidtest.gov. After a soft launch yesterday, there were isolated problems with user address verification, but no significant issues have been reported. The government's latest steps come as Americans are battling a COVID surge. Cases are dropping in the Northeast, but nationwide, hospitalizations are at sky high levels, with a seven day average topping 137,000. In North Carolina, residents are waiting in long lines for COVID tests. The latest data shows one in three people tested statewide was positive for the virus. But one infectious disease expert is hopeful all the positive cases could help going forward. Many people have been vaccinated and had it. Um, had, that will give us some degree of herd immunity going forward. Uh, and that the next variants that come will be variants that while they may be contagious, don't cause a severe disease. State records show about 59% of residents in North Carolina are fully vaccinated. Elise Preston, CBS News, New York. Now we do know that this is a lot of information to take in. So if you want to know more about COVID and how it's impacting your area, you can text the word COVID to 509-448-2000. We'll send a link with all of that information right to your phone.